God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Temptations, is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so my friend. She was always in Sunday school classes asking questions, even when a lot of times she probably shouldn't have been out doing anything. She was here. Uh, and I always felt honored by that. Uh, she, she seemed interested in what I had to share, and I always appreciated the, the attention she gave me. Do you know, when we talked, we talked about the present. I was thinking about how our conversations went most of the time. It was about how she and I felt about what was happening at the moment. Uh, she would talk a little bit maybe about the trips that she and Bill took on the back of a Harley Davidson and uh, and you, you kind of saw that she didn't tell me much about where they went or what they did just the fact that it was fun and uh, uh, I remember the fallen countenance as she began to think about and telling me about selling the bike and not being able to go out and travel anymore mostly though I, I you know I never really learned a lot about where she grew up or what she did growing up or any of that kind of thing. I knew more about Bill and Marge's relationship and conversations with Bill. Uh, I don't know why Marge didn't ever tell me any stories about that, and I would ask, but we didn't talk about those. But we were just kind of there in the moment, and we would talk, and then the conversation would end, and we would kind of sit silently for a little while, and I would tell her goodbye, and it was one of those kind of friendships where you, uh, you would shoot the breeze, and everything you would say would remind you of something inside and we would sit there and think about those things and talk to one another about those things just kind of comfortable with each other and content to be silent what do we do when we want to adequately show our regard for the people we love and then have to tell them goodbye I, mostly i think we hold hands and talk we just hug and talk and or be there with each other we we say i'm sorry we scramble to try to come up with the perfect words that will show our love and impart some degree of comfort but mostly we just sit in the presence of God and we let his grace wash over us and allow his calming presence to soothe our losses Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you pray, pray with me, please? Holy Father, be with us this afternoon as we remember Marge, as we celebrate her life and her relationship with you, Father, as we grieve her passing. I pray that you'd be with Anita and Barbie and with all their family as they, as they grieve their mom and, and their sister, their grandmother, their friend. Father, I pray that you would bless us in every way with the peace that passes understanding. And I pray it in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Marjorie Marge Floyd, 83 of Kenyon, passed away on April the 15th, 2022. Marge was born on December the 27th, 1938, in Martin, Texas, to Samuel and Christine Sexton. After growing up on the family farm in Cochrane County, and while attending Littlefield High School during her senior year, she married William Bill Floyd on April the 16th, 1957. While stationed in San Diego in the Navy, Bill and Marge became the proud parents of Anita, born March 29th, 1958. And after returning to Texas, they welcomed their second child, Barbie, to the family on March 21st, 1963. After living in Amherst, Midland, and Canyon, Bill and Marge made their home in Sunray, Texas for 38 years. They moved back to Canyon in 2010. 
During her career, Marge worked as a secretary for Maxis Energy before retiring after 19 years with the company. She was a devoted member of the Sunray Church of Christ and the University Church of Christ in Canyon. Marge enjoyed touring the United States with her husband on their Harley Davidson motorcycle, camping with family and friends and reading. She loved family and treasured her seven great grandchildren. Marge was preceded in death by her parents, her husband, Bill Floyd, in 2016. Her survivors include two daughters, Anita Brassville of Panhandle, Barbie Kluge and husband Clean of Canyon, six grandchildren, Drew Brassville and wife Cindy of Panhandle, Casey Brassville of Amarillo, Kyler Boss Brassville of Amarillo, Abby Brassville of Amarillo, Shayla Hoskins and husband Jared of Amarillo, and Stephanie Coyne and her husband Stephen of Sam Normroyd, Texas. Seven great-grandchildren, Audie, Kaylee, and Chisholm Brassville, Brecken and Kaysen Hoskins, and Sage and Waylon Cohen. And the family request any memorials be made to the Buffs of Christ Bible cheer. It's been a long goodbye. Those were the words that Nancy Reagan used to describe her husband's slow but steady memory decline which ended in his death. At one time, he was the most powerful man on earth, but eventually became only a shell of himself. I believe Ronald Reagan was one of our greater presidents. Anita, Barbie, and Glenn, you have experienced that same darkening journey that Mrs. Reagan experienced. I too also have experienced this journey with my mother. The long goodbye may be the cruelest of all journeys, especially for the loved ones who've left behind, who are the caretakers. When recognition and memory fades, the essence of a person also disappears. I know the recent weeks and months are fresh on your mind. I know that they were not easy times. But remember this, that was really not your mother. The purpose of our coming to, to together today is to remember the good times and celebrate the life of Marge Floyd a Christian, a wife, a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And when we consider the life of Marge Floyd, you might think that it was uneventful. The people that do would be wrong. All of us have experiences and make decisions that set the course of our future. For example, our decisions such as our commitment to God and who and if we will marry and where will we choose to live are some of the many factors that determine the outcome of our lives. Marge was an only child. I can imagine during her childhood years, she was the focal point of her family, but her idyllic life was shattered. She lost her mother when she was only 19. It's hard to lose your mother, especially when you're young. She was just entering in her young adulthood, 
a time in life when you can really appreciate your parents and, and look for guidance from them. Mark Twain once said, When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished as to how much he learned in seven years. And that's often the way it is with our parents. I'm sure losing her mother at 19 must have left a scar on her heart. However, Marge had some good days, some really good days. One great day, a happy day was when she committed her life to God and had her sins washed away. Marge would be the first to admit that she was not perfect, yet she trusted in Christ and his blood to make her perfect before God. Perhaps the most exciting day of her life was April 16th, 1957. That was the day she married William Bill Floyd. I have no doubt that Bill was the love of her life. They truly enjoyed one another. I first met them when I would go up to Sunray to preach. The Sunray Church was one of the supporting churches of our ministry, the Bible Church. And during that time, Bill was one of the elders. But I got to know them better when they moved to Canyon. I always enjoyed my visits with them, and they talked about their many trips, and I especially was fascinated about their motorcycle trips. Now, those of you who really knew Marge knew that she was a neat lady and never was a hair out of place. And I just thought, she must really love Bill to put on a helmet and get on the back of that motorcycle and go all over the country. She must really love him. Together, they also enjoyed craft shows and bluegrass festivals. She really enjoyed bluegrass music. Two other great days were the birth of their two daughters, first Anita while they were in San Diego. And according to the many, many pictures of Anita, she really enjoyed take, dressing you up and taking pictures. And, and uh, I, I know she just loved you and just the relationship and and gave you probably just a lot of attention, maybe even more than you deserve, but anyway. Then a call, along came Barbie, and now, Barbie looked just like her mother. But they didn't take as many pictures of Barbie. Now that's just the way it is in families. The oldest always gets the attention. And if you happen to be number three or number four, you're lucky to get one picture. But she loved you both. She loved you both. You see, a mother's love is unconditional. It's not performance-based. No matter our choices, good or bad, she loves you. She loves all her children, and that's God's love for us. After Bill died, James Barrington and I continued to visit Marge. Before COVID, he and I would always went visiting together, and we would go at least once or twice a week. And sometimes we'd visit people in the hospital. Other times it would be newcomers that come to the church or, or maybe a widow. And, and actually, there were some days we'd just run out of ideas on whom we should visit. 
and James would always say, let's visit Marge and the folks at Paladir Village. I'd respond, great idea. We just enjoyed sitting in her comfortable chairs and talking and drinking iced tea and just enjoying one another. We talked about the weather and our kids and grandkids. And we decided it was a lot more fun to be a grandparent than a parent. You see, you love your grandkids, spoil them, and then send them to their parents to straighten them out. Now that's the way to go. She always had some kind of gadget that she had bought on QVC. I, I, I was fascinated by the electric Christmas tree. The lights on it, would they would change all various colors. And, you know, just sit there and watching that Christmas tree, it just kind of relaxes you. And you could almost go to sleep. In preparation for such occasions as this, I always ask family members their fondest memories. The following is such a list. Glenn said that um, Marge could make the best fried chicken anywhere in any place in, in all the world. It was delicious. Frying chicken is sort of a lost art today. Barbie told how when her mother moved in the Connor house, she discovered the green button. Now, Connor house is a locked facility for security reasons and also they have memory patients. The green button controlled the lock on the front door. Marge delighted in going around and pushing that button, let people in and out even the memory patients who were not supposed to leave. Glenn told about the time that Shayla, I guess you were about eight or ten, somewhere in there, decided you want to take on Mimi. He said, Mimi, I'm going to take you on. And so they got down the floor and started wrestling. And Shayla was sort of a young budding athlete and Sheila found out pretty quick, Mimi could wrestle. Mimi pinned her to the floor a lot quicker than she thought or could imagine. Stephanie tells how that Mimi enjoyed doing nails. Another thing, too, is that Barbie always made sure that their bangs were freshly cut before going to Mimi's house. Because if Mimi decided to cut the bangs, they would be on an angle. And so to avoid that problem, that's what they did. Casey, the oldest grandchild, said, I enjoyed drinking coffee with Mimi. You see, Mimi would have her cup, and so she would give Casey some milk and a little coffee in it. He said, you know, I've loved coffee ever since. As we've already noted, Marge took great pride in her appearance. She took a lot of time in getting ready for either church or some special occasion. And as Barbie expressed it, she had no hurry button. We were always late. Many a time, Bill and the family would wait in the car while Marge made sure her appearance was just right. Now, to solve the problem of being late to church, Bill bought the house right across the street from the church building. And from that time on, the family was never late. Marge was a wonderful lady. I was glad that I got to know her. She wasn't perfect. None of us are. 
but she had Jesus as her Savior. And that is all that matters. I'll close with one passage. It's in Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica. In chapter 4, he writes these words. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instruct you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you're living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. Then he continues. Now, about your love for one another, you do, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. And make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business, work with your hands just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. That was the life of March 4th. Before we pray, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. We praise you, God. You are the creator of this universe. And Father, you are the savior of the world. Father, we give you glory and praise for the life of Marge Floyd and for her family, for the good that is done through all of them. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the sweet memories. We thank you for the Christian example. And Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for the way that Marge submitted to Christ and the way that she set that example for her family and the way that his light continues to shine through them. Father, we ask that you would please bring comfort at this time. When we think about Marge, Father, we think about Paul saying, to live is Christ, to die is gain. And we entrust Marge into your hands. But Father, for those that remain behind, we pray for comfort. We pray, Father, that you will let those sweet memories remain. And Father, we pray that you will help us to take comfort in, in your embrace. To take comfort in the fact that Jesus wept. And to take comfort that Jesus will come again. Father, we ask that today, that all that is said and done 
concerning Marge will honor her and will glorify you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 8. Uh, you're there in the middle of the account of the flood, and there's this long descriptive account of the rain, how the floodgates of heaven were opened, how the fountains of the abyss were, were broken open, and everything collapsed. Water, which to the Hebrews symbolized chaos, water just covered everything. God's creation is being undone and, and destroyed. And there follows 40 days, 40 long, scary, chaotic days, the drumming of the rain in ways that we can't even begin to imagine, especially out in this country nowadays when we're just begging for just a little bit drop of rain. Water as it increased and grew higher and higher and the, the thunderous waves are tossing the ark to and fro. And then following the 40 days, 150 days of floating on the water, five months of floating on the water with no land in sight, just, just the eeriness of chaos and fear and wondering what's going to happen next. Wondering, I imagine, where's God? And what in the world is God doing here? But you, you read verse 1, a, a, a passage to me of great comfort and confidence. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. God remembered. Memory is such a special part of our human relationships. I, 
I know you've experienced that over the past few years as Marge tended to lose control of her memory and, and there were those things that she remembered and things that she didn't remember and there's always a little bit of hurt that kind of gets tied in with that because you know in the back of our mind lurks the idea that we remember the things we really want to remember and so when you go in to sit down with someone who's having memory troubles and they can't remember exactly are you are you one of my children or are you somebody strange that I don't recognize we began to wonder do they really care about us at all God remembered and there isn't, it really in that, there isn't an, an aspect of I didn't forget you. There's something more in there as well. Uh, that's why sometimes we need to go back to the original language, I guess, to hear what ancient people heard. Remember isn't merely, in, in Hebrew, remember isn't just a function about memory. It's also about honor. It's about showing regard for someone that I care about. I, I don't just remember my mother. I honor her for who she was and what she has done with me. And so here is Noah risking so much in a violent world of sin to stay true to God and to be honorable and to be righteous in his generation and committing so much faith, uh, committing so much in faith to the God who promised him that he was going to destroy the world. Noah, who has dragged his family into this abyss of fear and uncertainty and boredom, God remembered Noah. It's not like an afterthought there, you know, where God would say, well, oh yeah, wasn't, wasn't there an ark around here somewhere? You know, I shouldn't remember having an ark out there someplace. But rather, God remembering as he honors Noah as a valuable friend, an honored friend, and gives Noah all that, uh, gives Noah and all those people that are associated with him a place in this new clean world. And I think about that when I consider the fact that God remembered March, just as we remember her. And, and that doesn't mean March is just a memory. You know, somehow she's faded off into this, this misty world of memory. But, but it's, a, it's a memory that we honor. We honor her for what she is to us in, in our different ways. We honor her as Bill's wife. We honor her as Anita's mom and Barbie's mom. We honor her as grandmother, a woman of vitality, a woman of strength, a woman of character, a woman of love. God remembers too. The psalmist sings, don't remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Mary, the mother of Jesus, in her song, Glorifying God for His Grace Toward Her, sings, He has helped His servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. I think, too, of somebody like Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, who it's testified of him that he and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. And Cornelius tells Peter then about the appearance of an angel Cornelius, the angel said, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you've shown him as you've helped his people and can you continue to help them. John writes, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have been done is in the sight of God. And not just in the sight of God, as though God is watching, but these good, good works have been empowered by God. God remembers those things. God takes notice of those things. And it's that God who remembers that we celebrate today. This is the God who Marge served. This God who shaped her life through her faith in Jesus. The God who fulfills all the promises that he's made to her and that, he relied, that she relied on all of our life, we remember, and we remember with joy because God has remembered. Because Marge's life has not merely been only a good life. It has eternal significance, and God honors it, and God has honored it, and he continues to honor it through his word. Dirk, would you come and lead us in prayer, please?
Let's pray together. Most loving God in heaven, thank you for allowing us to gather as family and friends. And remember the life of March Floyd. She touched in one way or another each and every one of us. And as such, our lives have been enriched. And her love and her memory and her selflessness and her sacrifice will live on through us and through everyone she touched. Thank you for her example. Thank you for her love for her family. Thank you for her selflessness. Thank you for her teachings. Thank you for the times she spent with others and influencing them. Thank you for her commitment to you and to your son. Thank you for the example that she leaves to each and every one of us as one of your children. I'm so appreciative of the opportunity we have to celebrate her life and recognize in the days and weeks to come there will be moments of sadness as a result of her passing. As such, I ask that you be with each and every one of us and give us peace. Give us a sense of your comfort which only you can provide. Yet henceforth, let us with joy and with enthusiasm and with smiles and with a sense of satisfaction and a sense of agape, remember the life of March Floyd and the meaning that she brings to each and every one of us. Thank you for your creation. Thank you for bringing us, Marge. Be with each and every one of us. And as that will strive to reflect your son henceforth, just as Marge Floyd did throughout her life. Thank you for the example of your son. And through the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before His throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth. From the depths of the sea, the of the sea let all creation praise His name. From the ends of the earth, from the, ends of the, earth, from the depths of the sea, from the depths of the sea let all creation praise His name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. May our homes be filled with dancing. May our homes be filled with dancing. May our streets be filled with joy. May our streets be filled with joy. May injustice bow to Jesus. May injustice bow to Jesus. As the people turn to pray from the mountain. To the valley, hear our praises rise to from the heavens to the nations. Hear our singing, fill the air. May our light shine in the darkness. Walk before the cross as we walk before the cross. May your glory fill the whole earth. May your glory fill the whole earth as the water roars the seas from the mountain to the valley. Hear our praises rise to you. God forever 
redeemed shall be strong in purpose and in unity, declaring aloud praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor be to our God forever and ever, be to our God forever and ever, be to our God forever and ever, amen. Be to our God. Make the harbor in the darkness made.